Chris Elliott fans are more irrational than Connor Roy thinking he could win the presidency, right? They're the Dallas Cowboy fans of NASCAR. They're the Dale Jr. fans of NASCAR, if we're being completely honest, because they have such irrational thoughts. If any time their driver does something, they're so quick to criticize any sort of lack of performance, you'd think they were Star Wars fans. But now they're criticizing his season in 2023, and I don't necessarily understand why. Obviously, he missed the seven races of the season, uh, starting after Fontana. He misses six races and then obviously gets suspended for wrecking Denny Hamlin in the World 600. But the fact that he's only 60 points out of the playoffs at the moment is actually remarkable. It's insane that they're so quick to criticize him because of a 12th place finish at New Hampshire. They want Alan Gustafson fired. Let me be honest with you. If you fire Alan Gustafson, that's the worst move you could possibly make right now. Why would you fire a guy that won five races with him last year, won a championship with him uh, within the last few seasons, and now is really the only sort of consistent thing happening at the nine team? This past weekend, all that New Hampshire showed was the team is a bit resilient because they didn't deserve a 12th place finish, but they still got one, and it showed that Corey LaJoy probably is better than what everybody said after that run at Gateway because, once again, we head to another flat track, albeit two different types of packages, and the nine car looks absolutely lost out there, which is a bit perplexing considering Alan Gustafson used to be the king of setting up cars on flat tracks. Ask Mark Martin. Ask Jeff Gordon. He's really good at it. So to come at Chase Elliott and be like, oh, he's having a terrible season, he looks disinterested, maybe there's a falling out with Rick Hendrick or Jeff Gordon with zero, zero evidence to back that up, it's just confusing. Like I said, he's 60 points below the playoff cutoff line. Fans are like, oh, he can't point his way in. He still could point his way in. The biggest downfall of the nine team right now is their lack of playoff points. If they could just get playoff points, they would be in a much better spot. Having said all that, he still missed seven races this season, and he's just outside the top 20 in points, only 60 points below the cutoff line. Since his return, uh, the 11 races since he's been back, or the 11 races, I guess, that he's ran since his, breaking his leg after the Fontana race, he scored six top 10 finishes, four top fives in those 11 starts, including a streak of top fives, uh, just two weeks prior to what we've had. And in those 11 races he's been back, two of them have been Taldega and Atlanta, complete, you know, shit shows if we're being completely honest. And he still managed to at least collect points and but not get top 10 finishes out of it. But he went on a run of fifth, fourth, third, and you would think that eventually those wins are going to come. Even if you don't have the outright fastest speed, if you pull a Jimmy Johnson and put yourself in contention enough times, eventually you're going to find victory lane. Alex Bowman, perfect example of that. Maybe he just needs to switch his car number to the 48 and he'll uh, just end up in victory lane. But he's having a season this year, again, that some people would wish they would have. Even after missing seven races, Ty Dillon would sell his entire family for, to have the season Chase Elliott is having right now because it would probably guarantee him another job next year, which he likely won't have. But Chase Elliott fans just continue to be wildly irrational and there's some definite rational ones out there don't get me wrong there's some out there that are like oh he doesn't deserve to be in the playoffs or if it happens it happens if not it doesn't like it's been a really weird season and I think that's where you see this disconnect between Chase and maybe the team at this year they just haven't gelled right like he broke his leg and then he comes back and he gets suspended he's been doing things that are out of character he threw a temper tantrum wrecked any Hamlin uh should have been a better snowboarder and then he comes back, and it just doesn't seem like maybe he... People are like, oh, it doesn't look like he cares. Chase Elliott has the personality of a water bottle, like, if we're being completely honest. So to be like, oh, he looks down, he's always looked down, right? Like, he constantly... We made jokes for years that he hates it for his guys after he would blow another race win. He's just not a guy that really wears his emotions on his sleeve, uh, unless Denny Hamlin's involved, if we're being honest. So... That's where it comes down to. And I saw somebody say that, you know, Chase Elliott needs to make the playoffs for the ratings. The Chase Elliott affects the ratings thing that's been going around is a bit overblown. Chase Elliott doesn't really affect the ratings one way or another. They're like, oh, there's a 500,000 viewer decrease if Chase Elliott isn't watching. That's not true. You're telling me that for some races, a quarter or 40% of the people, or not 40%, a quarter or... 20% of viewers aren't tuning in. No, that's just not happening. Like, races just vary depending on the track, the channel, and the time. Like, Chase Elliott certainly doesn't always affect 
the ratings. But if Chase Elliott isn't in the playoffs, it's not the worst thing in the world. Is NASCAR going to go back and rewrite the rules to get in the playoffs so that they can uh, make sure that Dale Jr. and Jeff Gordon are always in? I don't think so. I don't think you can have more than 16 different cars. That's a bit excessive. What are we going to do? Go up to 32 cars? Actually, forget it. All 36 charter teams just get into the playoffs and then we just have a, a format of just breaking it down from there. No, that's never going to happen. Chase Elliott missing the playoffs, like it happens. Joey Logano missed the playoffs. He comes back and wins the championship. Sometimes you just have down years, and it happens. But to say that we need Chase Elliott in the playoffs, we don't need Chase Elliott in the playoffs. Does it help? Sure. Is he going to be out in the round of 12? Maybe with the way they're running right now, unless they find something. But at the same time, he maybe doesn't deserve to be in the playoffs, right? If he points his way in or wins, by all means, be in the playoffs. But at the same time, like, has he shown championship speed? Not really. Not yet. He's shown round of eight speed. I'll give him that. But right now, with his current lack of playoff points, it's really going to be hard for him to advance further into the into the playoffs unless he can win some races. And right now, he's not doing that. Granted, we're coming up on a number of tracks that he could be competitive at. Pocono, he won there last year when Denny got DQ'd. Watkins Glen, obviously he has a great relationship with that track. Indianapolis, it's a road course. He's never won there. But it's a place that he could win at, right? And then, of course, you have Daytona. He could still win at. Michigan is a bit of a toss-up. And Richmond, his car ran second there in the spring. So there is hope for Chase Elliott fans out there if you want to see your driver potentially get a victory. But to say that there's something wrong with Chase Elliott, to say that he's broken or he doesn't care, I don't think that's entirely true. I think it's just been a really messed up year. But statistically, he's still having a pretty good season. Like, on paper... He has the same numbers in terms of top fives and top tens as Tyler Reddick and Bubba Wallace. And they're both in the playoffs, and they both have raced every race this season. So, and that's not a knock on either of those guys. I'm just saying that the nine car hasn't been as bad as I think some of these doomsdayers, you know, want it to be. But will he make it in? I right now think that I was on board with him needing to point his way in. And I think he can still point his way in, right? The unfortunate thing is, is we have Pocono coming up as well as the two road courses at Watkins Glen and Indianapolis. And while you can get stage points there, you do pit differently than what your state, if you're going for the race win, you're not caring about stage points, probably uh, specifically in stage two. So that's where there's a bit of a disconnect because if he's in contention for a race win, I think that he's throwing away some playoff points, but he has to in order to chase that win because that's an auto lock versus having to point his way in and probably needing some less fortune from other people. So I still think Chase Elliott gets into the playoffs. I'm not backing down from that. Right now, I'm probably about 70-30, right? So we'll see what happens. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram, threads, and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.